शिव योग Good evening. It is said of him that he is no ordinary person. In fact, he is known throughout India, but also outside India. He is someone with amazing power, a fantastic personality indeed. He is considered to be the father of ancient Siddha healing, having, to quote from the pamphlet I'm holding right now, revived all the sacred wisdom. of the ancient seers which was previously only passed on from master to disciple he has made available this sacred knowledge to the common man and of kritishan ladies and gentlemen let's welcome this evening in our midst of dhut baba sri ranand ji from india swami ji baba ji good evening namaskar and welcome to mauritius namaskar and also welcome to your life partner who is It's our pleasure to welcome Guru Ma this evening. <laughs> Samaji, if I'm not mistaken, this is your first visit to Mauritius. Previously, I think the only country I've been visiting outside India is Thailand. Um, my first question will be a very classical one, Samaji. Who is Samaji? Who is Baba Ji? And what are the objectives of your visit in Mauritius? Actually, the main objective is. to make people aware that they have enormous power infinite potential and they are the creator of their own destiny and such a wonderful country such a wonderful people if they know this ancient wisdom of holy siddhas they can make their life very purposeful and very wonderful But Swamiji, let let me. I don't insist, but let me come on the first part of my question. Who are you? I am a being of light, and I have created this body to have the earthly experiences, and so are you. The same. We all are the being of light. We all have come on this planet to have certain wonderful experiences, but when we come on this planet. then we forget who we are and then we forget our purpose my very objective is to remind people what is their very purpose of life and their purpose is not to suffer but their very purpose is to experience what best of the best which this planet earth can offer they have to remain very happy and peaceful because the reality the truth of every human being is that he is sat chit anand he is a being of total bliss being of light so in the physical form he is not meant to suffer he is not meant to create sorrow but happiness give happiness give unconditional love and experience love listening to what you're saying uh, somaji um, i'm tempted to ask you another question and that is what is so uncommon with you i mean intellectually spiritually is there a line of demarcation between you and what i would call the common man or the layman i mean between you and the ordinary people i mean the word ordinary stands only for the sake of comparison frankly speaking there is no difference between me and any other human being the only difference is i have been able to reach to the core inside me i have been able to know who am i and the other people have to start their journey or they are already on their way to know themselves and i have come here to guide them that they are the god they are the ultimate light they are the bliss they are the parabrahma how would you react if people say 
Well, Swamiji, you are a Godhead. You are, you are Godhead. Who is not God? You are God. Everyone is God. The only thing is we have forgotten who we are. So every human being has to be reminded that you all are God. I am also God. Do we then suffer from what I would call a crisis of identity on this earth? It is like this, <clears throat> that the modern psychologists, they say that average human being is using only 4% potential of his total mind power. 96% of what he has in the form of mind power, the average human being is not aware of. Medically, if we say, we say that average human being, only 3% of his total body DNA are active. 97% are inactive. He is not aware of. So basically, every human being is not aware of what is his true potential. Until the time he is not aware of his true potential, how he can live his life fully. So everyone leads the life of an ignorant person and leave this planet Earth in a state of ignorance. And every master, every holy siddha, their only one agenda was that you must know yourself and you must unfold your hidden potential and you must live your life fully. And that is also my objective. Every human being has to know because today the technology advancement is taking place. So much we are learning about computers. So much we are learning about information technology. Whereas the scientist says that human brain is the most powerful transmitter ever made on this planet. There is no transmitter more powerful than the human brain is. Similarly, there is no computer so far is made which is more powerful than the human brain is. So when we have so much of hidden potential within us, we must know ourselves. We are spending a lot of time in learning science. What about the science of self? It has to be taught right in the schools to the children so that they can create their own life. They can create their own destiny. They can experience whatever they want to experience in their life. The suffering will vanish. The limitations will vanish. Because the moment you come to know who you are and what all the potential you have, then this we are talking about poverty, we are talking about scarcity, Nothing comes from outside. Everything comes from within. We have to generate and create. So once the person knows about this divine wisdom, then the whole world will be very happy and peaceful, content let, and fulfilled. Swamiji, let me go back to what you said previously is about the way the mind functions. And if I'm correct, you said that we individuals, we use only 4% of our mind power. 96% is not there. So this is a very big gap between 4% and 96%. So my question is, how difficult is it for us, let's say, get the mind working beyond 50%, 60%, let's say? What are the preconditions for us to reach that much of the brain working? The difficult and easy is Example is a very sophisticated, powerful computer is there and there is no teacher. And a person has to understand by himself how difficult it will be for him to learn about that computer. And there is a teacher 
who is well versed with that computer technology he is there to teach and the student how easy it is for him to learn that computer similarly about the human self if anybody has known about himself if he is available it is that very easy and if someone is not available then how difficult it is that is how you can measure it it, it looks i mean for the ordinary person it looks quite difficult anyway if that ordinary person is guided it is so very easy immediately he can experience he can go inside he can unfold and he can start performing miracles in his life so you you insist very much in what uh, has been published on you and what you have been discussing in india is that we need to have the proper stamina the proper energy to go spiritual i mean from your point of view and as you said previously the stage of spirituality you have reached maybe makes it easy for you to talk in that direction but what about people who have got a lot to go before they go spiritual well uh, instead of staying uh, saying stamina i'll say the desire is needed and desire will come only when the person sees like any invention the desire is created in the mind when the people see that it is there it can be achieved so once that desire is there anyone can achieve it it is as simple as that like a piece of iron if you just want to magnetize it and just keep it for years together you keep it it will not get magnetized but if there is a magnet bring it near the magnet and that piece of iron will get magnetized so similarly the ancient siddhas wisdom they say that once the desire is there anybody can achieve anybody can unfold his hidden powers anybody can make his life very happy and purposeful it is very easy and the purpose of my visit is to tell people that don't say that you have a limitations you cannot have limitations you have infinite within you and once you have infinite within you where is the question of saying that i have limitations and once they start they taste the success once anybody tastes the peace of mind happiness bliss tranquility then they move on to that path on day now the will to go in the direction you men say i mean moving towards a spirituality it looks i would insist quite difficult for those who have not been groomed in that direction so as you said we need somebody to help us to guide us Uh, you are the guru now if i tell you that for many people going in the field of spirituality is something which is kept for let's say when the person retires at the age of 50 60 then he would say yes i have the time is it too late then if you see a plant growing first the seed will germinate and then a very thin shoot plant shoot will come out you can turn you can give a shape and once it is grown as a tree whatever shape it has taken it is impossible to change the shape of that tree similarly the spirituality must begin right from the childhood lord krishna in bhagavad gita he said that every human being must lead 200% life 100% is his worldly life successful worldly life and to achieve that successful worldly life he must have the spiritual strength so 100% spiritual life 
these are the two wheels that makes the life as a holistic life. So it has to start right from the beginning because the youth today is, uh, if you will see, they are confused at a certain stage. There is a competition, the competition is increasing and they have to choose the line, which, which side, which line they must pick up, what is the career they must pick up. But if they are following this Shiva Yoga, that is merging with the infinite power, then they decide in advance, this is a practical experience I am telling you, that children, they decide well in advance how much percentage they are going to get in their examination results. Mm -hmm. And believe me, they get exactly whatever they have pre-decided. And after, once they have the willpower, once their consciousness is raised, then they are aware what profession will give them contentment and happiness. And that is the decision, the right decision they take. And they go into that profession only. So, the strength, the wisdom and unfolding of your hidden powers, it must begin right from the beginning. Because if, like many people, those who are of a senior age, they say, if we could have learned Shiva Yoga at our young age, whatever sufferings we had to, under, we, we experienced during our life, that we wouldn't have experienced. We are happy now, but lot better would have happened if we would have learned this Shiva Yoga right from the childhood. I, I, so. I, I agree with what you say, Swamiji, but still the, the, the point is, as you rightly said, we should start right from the beginning, from childhood, people at a very tender age. But the other question is, what about the rest of the people, those who have not known anything in the childhood about Shiva Yoga? What is the, the alternative? How do they go about? The alternative is you. Through you, <laughs> we can reach to many people. And we are reaching to many people. And another thing is word of mouth. Like when a person is so confident, when a person is ebullient with energy, when a person says, this is what going to happen to me, and it happens, then everybody is attracted towards him. The what secret, what you have got. Mm -hmm. Then they come to know that, yes, he is connected to those spiritual powers. So a lot of youth is now attracted towards Shiva Yoga and they are following this path because as I said, why a human being lead the life of an average human being? Why should he suffer? Why should he live in the situation of scarcity when in abundance, everything is available in the universe. Whatever he wants, he can create that for himself. So I personally feel that while teaching a student of physics, chemistry or biology, this law of Shiva Yoga merging with infinite and tapping the cosmic wisdom, that knowledge also must be given to every student so that he can realize his dreams and he can create his own destiny. Okay, let's come to the point of uh, one of your the main traits you have is about the healing power mm -hmm. within you. Now you have got it, we learned about it, we read about it. How do we impart that healing power to other people? First of all, when we talk about healing, healing of what? Healing of a disease. Now we must understand what is a disease. Disease is disturbance in ease. When the life is moving very smoothly, 
some disturbance comes in life that disturbance in ease is called disease it is not necessarily a physical ailment it can be the relationship problem it can be a failure in life it can be lack of abundance and prosperity it can be anything where the disturbance in life is created the person wants to lead his life in a particular direction but the disturbance is coming now the whole universe is made up of vibrations vibration gives birth to energy and energy gives birth to the matter even the einstein has given this formula e is equal to mc square matter everything whether a human being whether animal whether plants whether house whether car whether dollars everything the matter is made up of energy and energy is made up of vibrations if vibrations are low energy is weak and materialization it will not occur but if we learn to enhance our vibration level energy level we can create the desired results the whole universe the holy universe it has various dimensions and we are living in third dimension and it goes right up to the infinite dimension every dimension has the life force energy life force energy is the purest of the pure vibrational energy of every dimension which gives birth to all positive things which helps in materialization now in shiv yoga we tap the sanjeevani shakti which is the life force energy of infinite dimension in our ancient india we believe in lord shiva bhagwan maha mrityunjaya the shiva has the form maha mrityunjaya and maha mrityunjaya has the female energy within him that is called sanjeevani shakti now that sanjeevani shakti if we learn to tap that energy and along with our thought process if we combine that sanjeevani shakti it becomes a dharana and it materializes now whatever disease has set in in the body how it has set in into the body is because of our negative thought process because of our negative karma and that negative energy has entered in the physical body and the disease has occurred now the healing is we tap that energy of god vibration and we project it to that part of the body which needs healing and it starts vibrating at a much higher frequency and once it starts vibrating at a very high frequency the disease it disappears it is that simple it 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 goes with your thought it's like a laser beam shambhavi and it enters into that organ of the person and the vibration it enhances and the person they start getting cured like uh, somebody says they have kidney stones now physically if you will see kidney stone is a stone which is formed inside a lot of logic will give that it is by eating more calcium or whatever it is there which is only a logic mind giving because if clairvoyantly you see that stone etherically it is made up of black energy mm-hmm. the grayish etheric energy and once that sanjeevani is projected that black energy is transmuted into the golden energy and it is surprising that in many cases people when they go for the retest done 
they find there is no stone. It has disappeared. Somebody asked, it is a miracle you are performing. I said, I am performing the same miracle which you are performed already. He said, how we have performed? I said, without surgery, if you can bring the stone in, without surgery, I can bring the stone out of your body. But there is a difference between what you are telling us in matters of healing. What is the difference as compared to what we call modern medicine or traditional medicine? Every medicine has only one objective is healing. And healing is a positive energy. And if you take the modern medicine, it also has the positive objective. But it has to combine together. One factor is missing, which today I talked with the doctors, the medical doctors, that modern medicine in many ailments, the cure is there. And in many other ailments, there is no cure. So there is certain vacuum which is there. We will have to combine. So if Sanjeevani is combined with the modern medicine, we can achieve excellent results. So let's come back to what you said a few minutes back. And my question is, is it that whatever happens to a human being, you or me or anybody, is it that it is the food, the, the food of what we call in Hinduism, our past karma, what we have been doing in the past life? How convincing is that argument to people who are not in the spiritual world? Is it a question of the way we think, the thought process? Well, um one thing you said, is it the food intake or is it the past karma? Now, I'll give you an example. There is an outbreak of epidemic. Is it 100% population, those who suffer from that virus or bacteria, or only few people, they suffer? So those who are suffering is all right. Those who are not suffering, the question should come why they are not suffering. They all are living in the same conditions. Now, the past karmas, no, nothing can harm a human being. I want to reveal this particular thing. Nothing can harm a human being. Only human being can harm his own self. It is their own so, making. Huh? It is their own making. Yes. So, whatever past karmas are there, these are called the psychic impressions of the past, whether this life or of past life. Now, these psychic impressions, they control his mind, his thought process. And that thought process creates suffering from that person. Like, suppose a person who is in a state of uh, very deep sorrow, if medically you will see, his defense mechanism is totally shattered. His immune system is very weak. And on the contrary, if a person is very happy, you will find his immune system is stronger. There was an antidote for cancer. It was made in USA, some very expensive medicine. And they found that any person who is very happy, he is enjoying his holidays and he has forgotten about all his worries, everything. He is just happy. And they took the blood sample. They found that the same medicine his body is secreting. That means if a person is very happy, his body immune system is stronger and he is producing antidote for every disease, not only every physical ailment, but everything in his life. And if a person is sad, he is uh, not believing himself, he is not believing others, and he is only thinking negatively, then those negative energies, they set in, and they manifest, they materialize the negative incidents in his life. 
Swamiji, uh, see what's going on in the world in general. Is it in Asia, in Europe, in Africa, or elsewhere? Uh, my question is, if you are going to tell somebody that you need to do something, an effort should come from your side for you to go spiritual, to enjoy the benefits of spirituality. You're likely to have something like, why bother about spirituality? I'm enjoying the comfort of the material world, of worldly things. I'm, I'm in, totally in comfort with what I'm doing. So what do we say to somebody who has got such an answer? First of all, we must understand what is spirituality. Spirituality is not going and sitting in the temple and ringing the bells or going Renouncing to the church. Everything? No. Spirituality is, in two words I'll say, giving love and receiving love is spirituality. Giving love, if only these two things, if we remember and we implement in our life, every disease will disappear. Every scarcity will disappear. Every suffering will disappear. Giving love and receiving love. When you sit for meditation and when you are very much at peace, that time you are not angry at anyone. It is only when you are <laughs> not at peace, then you are angry. That is opposite to it. Giving hate and receiving hate. Whereas spirituality is giving love and receiving love. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, every holy Siddha, like Lord Buddha, Lord Mahavir, Baba Gorakshanath, Mahavatar Baba, they learned only one thing, that is unconditional love. They all say one thing, that no one is separate from me. When I am Parabrahma, I am the Atma, I am omnipresent. When I am omnipresent everywhere, then you are not separate from me. Mm -hmm. When you are not separate from me, I am not going to hate myself. I am going to love myself. That means I am going to love you unconditionally. That is the level of consciousness which a person must achieve. Raising the consciousness level. And once we understand this, all the sufferings, of the whole world will disappear. Because if today we say this is the problem, that is the problem, one country is fighting with another country, one religion is fighting with another religion, why it is happening? It is because of collective consciousness. Like every human being is thinking something. Now whatever you are thinking, Whatever that your community is thinking, whatever is your country is thinking, whatever globally every human being is thinking, that creates a collective consciousness. Now, if every person is saying, let me destroy the other person, let me destroy the other person, what message goes to the universe in the collective consciousness is that these human beings, they want to destroy each other then the natural calamities are created. The um, cyclones will come, tsunamis will come, the water level will go up, whatever those things are there. It is because of we are creating. God is unconditional love. Shiva is very loving. And whatever we want, he materializes it into the reality. Now the collective consciousness, if it is thinking destruction, they are invoking destruction and that destruction is materialized into the reality. Now if collectively we all are thinking happiness for everyone, we, I love myself and I love everyone and everybody loves me and enough food for everyone shelter for everyone, cloth for everyone, education for everyone, peace for everyone. Collectively, if we think, we'll create that and the sufferings can be reduced. Samji, let, let's go back to what you said previously about inculcating the principles 
the good principles to children right from the start and for them to go uh, towards spirituality. Now, the big question these days is what's happening between the children and their parents. You will agree with me that today the way things are going, there is really a very big gap. It is confrontation parents. is going on. The problem is that uh, we are not accepting. We are not accepting our children. And uh, first of all, we must know what is the meaning of spirituality. Now, in, in many cases, the parents, they think uh, spirituality means going to the uh, temple or church or any holy place and uh, go there, bow down and do all karm kand. Sabse bada mandir, the beautiful temple, is the human being. Yes. Because somebody asked me, which is the best temple? I said, the, there are three types of temples. One is the Uttam, Madhyam and Adham. Uttam is the best. Madhyam is average. And Adham is whatever you call it. The one temple which God has made is bound to be Uttam. And what temple God has made? This human body. Because Shiva lives inside. The Vedas, Upanishads and every religion they say that God is within. So the best temple is the human body. The second temple is which man has created so that they can worship. And Adham is the temple which is created due to some vested interest. Then the God is not going to live, only the devil is going to live in that temple. Mm -hmm. Swamiji, excuse me, what is it that we parents have failed uh, in relation with our children? Why is it that young people today, they are questioning what we call the parental authority? I guess something has gone wrong. What is it exactly? Because we all must know ourselves, we all must learn about ourselves, which we have not done it. And today the children are very intelligent. And in the good old days, whatever parents they said, the children, they were accepting it. Today they are saying, you are telling us, but do you know what does it mean? So it's high time the parents must know themselves, they must know Shiv Yoga, so that they can connect to their core inner power and they can talk to the children and they can guide the children in a much better way. Another thing is, I want to give a message to every parent. They compare their children according to themselves. Now, if I start comparing my teenager child with myself, my age is different. I have already passed through Brahmacharya Ashram, Grastha Ashram, Vanuprastha Ashram, I am into Sanyasa Ashram. And my child is entering into Grastha Ashram. He is going to have every worldly comfort. And if I start preaching him at that level that I am sitting here and you do this, that is not a proper communication. It's too much imposing on them. Imposing. It is not correct. Accept them. And only thing is that the gap which is widened, that must be reduced. And this can be reduced only and only with one thing. And that is just give them love. Do not criticize them. You cannot correct any child by criticizing them. You must tell them what is right for them, not the negative side, and give them love. Make yourself their best of the best friends. Then only you earn the right to communicate with them. Yes, but Swamiji, the, the, the thing is, in our quest to bridge the gap between the children and the parents, I take it that it should be a two-way traffic. It shouldn't be only the responsibility of the parents. I'm not defending the parents. But what about the responsibility of the child, of the children? Children is like a computer who sees 
feed me with the data and I'll come out with the output. Now the parent has to feed the data. The child is at a learning stage. He's a consumer of whatever you give him. Yes. So if the first and the foremost thing is right, the learning begin right from the young age. If the husband and wife, they have a wonderful relationship, they are loving each other, the child will absorb that. But if husband and wife, they are fighting, and when their child fight in the school, they accuse, because child is only absorbing whatever his parents are doing. So if you want your children to be the very best, then you must create yourself as a model and accept him, give love unconditional. Why the children are now upset is because so much of scolding, so much of difference of opinion and so much of insecurity. Give them a nice security, give them so much of love and show yourself as an excellent model. They will accept you. Because today children are not going to take nonsense. For granted. Ah, that I am smoking and I am saying smoking is very bad and if you smoke, you, you don't have the right we to We have say. to set the example. Yes. Yeah. Samji, see what's going on in many countries and these are the very problems which are plaguing society in general, everywhere. Now, see about what's going on, the drug trafficking. So many people on the drug business, so many people have died and so many people will die because of the drug trafficking problem. See what's going on, prostitution, uh, child mortality, and so many, many calamities are there. Now, are the spiritual guru, what is the message you have to convey to the people through Shiv Yoga? Connect to the infinite and create that desire, whatever you want. The problem with us is that one untoward incident happens and we say it is happening. Mm -hmm. And once we say it is happening in general, the message is going to the collective consciousness. And we are creating more and more such incidents. Why the child is going for the drugs or such friends? Because he is not been able to find a true friend in his own home. He has not been able to find the peace of mind and happiness at his own home. That's where he is searching outside. So the problem is not the children and problem is not those who are drug traffickers. Problem is we have not been able to provide the congenial environment to our children. Make your home a very lovely, full of happiness, full of bliss and child will love to be with you. Samji, earlier we talked about what I, what I termed the lack of parental authority in modern society. The, the other big issue in the world today is the high rate of divorce around the world, the problem between husbands and wives and what not. As a spiritual man, how do you view that situation? And what are the corrective measures, if any, we can bring in? See, there is a thing called soul mate. Soul mate means union of two souls. Basically today, the marriage and the relationship is considered as a body attraction and bodily relationship. So once that is there, then the physical relations after some time, it's a law of nature, that whatever physical things are available, after some time it is going to decay. 
like a very nice food is served to you if one person is hungry he will be very happy to have food next time the same thali is given to him he say no i am full mm -hmm. and third time he say no no way and the fourth that. time he will reject now if the relationship is based on the body attraction or the physical aspects the problems are bound to occur but if it is loving the soul loving the energy these problems will not occur but today unfortunately we have drifted away from our roots so these problems are cropping up we'll have to hold on because modernization is excellent modernization is good but to enjoy the modernization you must hold yourself firmly to your roots the roots are your culture strongly hold on to your culture and then enjoy the modernization everything will be very fine somebody listening to you i come to another question is it somewhere down the line because we people have been playing playing with the law of nature all during the law of nature that today we witness so many calamities in the world and is there any remedial action likely to be put into action we must become natural what is natural nature is if we receive something we give something but human beings we have become selfish we only know in receiving and we do not want to give and that is why we have tempered with nature if we learn this basic law that's why i am saying spirituality is very very important when you are following this path of spirituality shiv yoga you will if nothing you can give you will give gratitude but we don't give that we give complaints mm -hmm. we receive from nature something nice and return we give them pollution so whatever we receive nothing comes free in the universe we must repay back attitude of gratitude okay. so if this culture is taught right from the beginning this very consciousness is taught right from the beginning then certainly we can solve this problem so much of plastic is uh, you know usage like uh, today i saw that chopping board earlier it used to be wooden now it is fiber so when the lady who was cutting chopping the Uh, vegetable fine fine when very fine plastic also she was chopping and people are going to eat that somebody let me come to the very last of my questions this evening um what is it that you intend to do during the workshops you're having in mauritius what i will do is this i enter in this room it's dark what i'll do is i'll find the switch switch on it's illuminated bring on and the light. and that is what i am going to search inside switch on and every person who is attending the seminar they are illuminated and they can see and they can lead the happy life and they can create whatever they want to create in their life somebody it has been very nice talking to you this evening May I on behalf of MBC thank you very much and thank you. wish you and your family all the very best during your stay in Mauritius Namaskar thank Namashiva. you Give yoga.